it's kind of funny to me that um, so many people in the comments section online are talking about synesthesia. Because uh, when Aaron emailed me or messaged me there the other day about this song, uh, about whether or not you know, it would be a good song to play, I was driving and I was pretty positive it actually said, smell the color nine, not smell the number nine. And I was like, that's a thing, right? Like, what is that called? And I couldn't remember what it was, so I went on, I went on Google, because that's my favorite tool right now, and looked it up, and it's called synesthesia, right? And Google says that synesthesia is a condition in which one sense, for example, hearing, uh, is simultaneously perceived as if by one or more additional senses, uh, senses such as sight, Another form of synesthesia joins objects such as letters, shapes, numbers, or people's names with a sensory perception such as smell, color, or flavor. Uh, one of the things that I do on a Sunday morning before I'm going to preach is I practice. So I was up in the, in the back room over there and, um, at the loft here, and I was practicing going through my message. And I was like, names. I wonder what, I wonder what my best friend Rob's name would smell like. And I was like, it's got to be chicken wings, right? Like, <laughs> Rob's name definitely smells like chicken wings. And like the really good kind, the one that's really spicy, that you have one and then nothing, you can't taste anything after that, right? <laughs> so, so um, can, like, can you imagine what it would be like if, let's say, for instance, right, like you, uh, uh, you do math, Right? And you are doing like fancy math, like, like uh, Elijah does fancy math, right? And, and like when I say fancy, it's, it's not one plus one equals three. It's, there's letters and stuff like that and numbers in it and everything. It's, it's fancy math. Like so if you're doing a fancy math question and you get like the result that you want, a really good result, and that result smells like strawberries, right? I, now for me, I like strawberries, so that would be what maybe a good result would smell like. But, Elijah, what do you think a bad result would smell like? Garbage? Maybe. Garbage? For me, it, it popped into my head that maybe a bad result would smell like licorice. Yeah. Right? Well, and some of you, I know some of you like black licorice, right? But for me, when I was a teenager, there's this, there's this drink called Sambuca. And I, I can't even smell black licorice anymore. I have a, like, a visceral reaction to the smell of black licorice. Uh, it's, it's one to this day, it still, it still sticks with me, right? Um, what about, uh, here's a, another good example. Um, we're now pretty deep in the summertime. Do you remember what like an early spring rainfall smells like? Right? It's, one of, it's actually one of my favorite smells. It's got a very specific kind of smell. Hope thinks, my wife, she thinks it smells like dead worms or dead fish, and half of the people in here think the same thing. <laughs> so, but for, for me, that smell brings me back to being like 14 years old in Newfoundland, uh, deep in the middle of nowhere in Grossmoor National Park, fishing in the pouring rain, right? So I'm out in the middle of nowhere, and I'm literally, I'm not a big fisherman, but it's by far the best fishing I've ever, ever experienced in my life. It, the, the line didn't even hit the water and fish were jumping up and grabbing the, the, the thing, the, the lure. It was crazy. Never since then, never experienced anything like that. You could drive down the road and see a ditch and throw a line in the ditch and catch fish, right? So that early spring rainfall immediately brings me back to that exact moment. Um, so here, here's another one, okay? Uh, what, what, about, what about this one? Okay, okay. Um, Certain types of hand sanitizer. Yeah, some of you are like, oh. Well, the LCBO and Home Depot, they use this type of hand sanitizer. And the first time I smelt it, I was like, that's baby puke. <laughs> right? It's like that vile, just, oh. And, and it brought me back to this moment where a child who shall remain unnamed projectile puked on the back of my seat and my head were on the highway in the summertime with no air conditioning and I had to clean it up 25 minutes later. For those of you who are thinking about having children, remember I said this, I'm sorry. 
And next time you go into Home Depot or LCBO, you'll remember it too. Um, and you're welcome. <laughs> so uh, let's, let's go way back. We've got to get back on track here a little bit. Uh, we've been in the Old Testament, and we've been talking a little bit about Moses and the Exodus story and some of the weird stuff that goes on in the Old Testament. And I was thinking, so we, we have this passage in Exodus 3, 2, and 3. It's where uh, Moses meets the burning bush, right? So uh, it says, that The Lord's messenger appeared to him in a flame of fire. Sorry, got to be able to see my screen. A flame of fire in the middle of a bush. And Moses saw that the bush was in flames, but it didn't burn up. And then Moses said to himself, let me check out this amazing sight and find out why this bush isn't burning up. First of all, um, it's a burning bush in the middle of nowhere. Have you not seen horror movies? That's bad. Anyways, backstory. Moses is uh, this guy who's lived in Egypt. He was kind of like, you know, saved by Pharaoh's daughter and stuff. And this whole crazy thing happens, and he kills some guard, and then he runs away, and he takes off, and he wanders the desert for a whole long time, meets his wife, meets his father-in-law, and they have children and stuff. Not the father-in-law and Moses, but Moses and his wife. And then he's like herding some kind of cattle. Um, you know, do you, do you actually herd like sheep on a mountain, or do you just follow them around with a stick and a dog? That's... I'm thinking he's more like following them around Mount Horeb, and he sees a burning bush. And it says, uh, when this next interesting thing happens, it says, when the Lord saw that he was coming to look, God called to him out of the bush, Moses, Moses. And Moses said, I'm here. He said, that's not weird. And then the Lord said, don't come any closer. Take off your sandals because you are standing on holy ground. Now, it doesn't say specifically that Moses took his sandals off, but I'm assuming that if you're walking around following some sheep on a mountain and a bush calls to you, a flaming bush calls to you and says, take your shoes off because you're standing on holy ground, you're just going to, okay, kick your shoes off. And get right to it, right? Because what else would you do if you came across a burning bush that tells you to take your shoes off? You take your shoes off. Like, okay, so think about this. He's walking around this mountain, and he sees this bush. He's like, that looks weird. Let's go check that out. So he walks up to this burning bush, and the burning bush calls to him and tells him, Moses, Moses. And, okay, I'm here, and... Take your shoes off, you're standing on holy ground. Okay, so take my shoes off. Now he's barefoot in the dirt on the mountain in front of a bush. And I can imagine, like, the bush probably smells, right, because there's a fire. And, like, it's like that bitter campfire smell, right? It, but that bitter campfire smell comes with, like, a taste too, right? Like, anybody that has been around a campfire for a period of time, you can, you can taste it, you can smell it, Right? But then he's also hearing the Lord call from him or for him from this bush. Right? So, so Moses is standing there in front of this burning bush, and he can taste, he can hear, he can feel, he can smell, he can he's experiencing this moment with all of his senses. You see, there's this word in Hebrew that's called the Shema, right? Um, it's also a prayer, but it's specifically a word. And, and it's roughly translated in the English as hear, or like to, to hear with your ears, right? It, it's kind of a bad translation in the English because um, for them, it's, it's not just to hear, like hear something. It's actually like to hear it so deeply with inside yourself that you have no choice but to listen and do what it says and obey. Okay, we don't have anything without having to explain it like that. We don't have anything in English that kind of translates specifically over like that. They just use the one word, and I think I think one of the things that um, uh, that made me think about that is um, well, let's put it this way. I, I have a question for all of you. Okay, and you at home or wherever you are watching today's message, um, have you ever heard something, anything? so deeply that you had no choice but to listen. 
I'll give you an example. Um, my wife, when I first met her, she was actually singing at uh, this club that we used to go to. And when I saw her, um, instantly I was like, oh, geez, she's going to be mean to me, but I'm going to love every second of it. And I, I have no choice. I have no choice, right? Um, if you're new to Vox, the hope being my wife being mean to me is just like an old thing anyways. It's, it's whatever. It's not that big of a deal. Um, she's a very lovely and caring person. Uh, Rob's scared of her, if that tells you anything. Um, so, but anyways, um, so what, what, what do you think? Have you, have you had that experience before? Any of you? Any of you here? Yes. Heather has? What was your experience? Do you mind sharing? You don't have to. I'm putting you on the spot. God told me to go do an MDiv. There you go. <laughs> Anybody else? Like, no? What about in the comment section? I'm not seeing anything. Is anybody seeing on the comment section that there might be something like that? I don't know if anybody's watching. Anyways, okay, we'll move on. Um, here's another question. Because the Bible, like especially that Moses story, talks very clearly about uh, Moses hearing the voice of the Lord, has anybody in this room or online actually heard the audible voice of God? Not seeing any hands go up. Oh, Patrick, maybe? Yeah? What was that like? You don't have to tell me what it says, but what was that like? Okay. Nice. All right, man, I got you. I love it. Okay, okay. That fits with everything that I just wrote, so now I don't feel bad. <laughs> so, um, okay. Uh, you were certain that it was the Lord, yeah. right? Okay, all right. Um, now, for me, I can't say that I heard the audible voice of God, but um, I heard an inaudible voice that I was certain it was God. If you want to know more about that, it's, I'm not going to get into it here. If you want to know more about that, it's under Storytime with Roy on, Vox, on, on online, and you can go watch it. It's, I'm not going to get into it here. Um, but here's a problem, okay? What if you can't say whether or not you heard the voice of God? What if you think that it's the voice of God? Ah, it might be him. Um, like, I've spoken to a lot of people, and they, they tell me things like, uh, um, I, just, I just can't figure out what God wants me to do. Or, I wish God would just be clear. And that one line in that song, smell the, no, the number, I almost said it again, smell the number nine, right? It, it is color? Okay, smell the color nine. All right. So, um, oh, lost. Okay. Uh, that one part where it says, like, I, I wish I could just, uh, something along the lines of, I wish I could hear you even if it was no. Right? Even if the answer was no. Just to have heard right? Um, what, about, uh, what, about, what about these ones? I know some of you grew up in church, you've probably heard these before. Uh, if you've ever watched one of those like um, uh, uh, TV evangelical preachers, you've heard this too. Uh, it's like, um, uh, God told me to do this thing. And it always does this with the hand, right? Or what about, uh, it was a message from the Lord, and they do this thing with the hand, right? What about uh, the Holy Spirit is pointing me to this thing? We hear, we hear that. Like, I've heard it. I've heard it a bunch of times in church. And it kind of drives me nuts because most of the time it's followed up with, like, look at this amazing thing that I just did, right? Um, because I'm special and I accomplished this all on my own uh, because the Lord told me to do it, right? And that bothers me. Um, like, how, how do we take that stuff and filter what's God and what's us? And I'd like to say that the Bible is very clear on this. No, it's not. It's not. It's not. Okay? Um, so we already, with Moses, we already have this burning bush. God speaks to Moses from a burning bush, right? And then it says uh, another one uh, in Exodus, 1321. 
By day the Lord went ahead of them in a pillar of cloud to guide them on their way, and by night in a pillar of fire to give them light so that they could travel by day or night. That's, uh, that's in the NIV, and several other translations do the exact same thing, except for the CEB. So I have this really cool Bible software program that kind of brings everything together, and it gives me like a word study um, or a comparison study. And you have like, uh, I have four major translations in this one section, and the CEB is like <laughs> over here. It's off on its own because it changes one word. Right, and, it, and so the translation for the CEB is Exodus 13, 21. The Lord went in front of them during the day in a column of cloud to guide them, and at night in a column of lightning to give them light. And this is the key point. This way they could travel during the day and at night. So it's not about the pillar of fire or the pillar of uh, lightning. It's about the fact that there's now light, and in the darkness, we can see where we're going. Like, Jesus, just throwing that out there. My friend Jeff Sensenstein would like that. Um, okay, so we can, we can jump forward a little bit, and we have some other great examples in the Old Testament. Um, so Sam, 2 Samuel twenty two fourteen. 14. Uh, this is a good one. It, it kind of, like, so the, the first one was dramatic, but this one here. The Lord thundered from heaven, and the Most High uttered his voice. <laughs> thundered from heaven. Um, how about this one? Let's pull out all the stops on this. Uh, 2 Samuel 22, 7. Um, In my distress, I called the Lord. I called out to God. From his temple, he heard my voice. My cry came to his ears, and the earth trembled and quaked. And the foundations of heaven shook, and they trembled because he was angry. Smoke rose from his nostrils, and consuming fire came from his mouth. Burning coals blazed out of it, and he parted the heavens and came down. Dark clouds were under his feet, and he mounted the cherub and, and flew. He soared on the wings of the wind. He made darkness his canopy. Sound like Batman. Around him the dark rain cloud of the sky out of the brightness of his presence. Bolts of lightning blazed forth, and the Lord thundered from heaven. The voice of the Most High resounded. His sh he shot his arrows and scattered the enemy. With great bolts of lightning he routed them. And the valleys of the sea were exposed, and the foundations of the earth laid bare at the rebuke of the Lord, at the blast from his nostrils. Thank you. Have a nice day. We will see you next week. The Lord speaks in mysterious ways. <laughs> um, it's like... It's pretty overly dramatic, right? Like, <laughs> uh, it's a little extreme. Um, but there's this other passage, a couple books uh, uh, later on, uh, in 1 Kings 19.12. It says, after the earthquake, there was a fire. And the Lord wasn't in the fire. After the fire, there was a sound, thin and quiet. That throws a good big huge wrench into a lot of what people talk about the Lord sounds like. Because it seems to me like God is just going to talk to us and interact with us in any way the Lord feels like is going to accomplish whatever the Lord wants to accomplish. Right? He speaks through uh, uh, dreams and visions, pictures. He speaks in the scriptures. He speaks through prophets. Uh, you can hear his audible voice sometimes. Um, there's angels that speak on his behalf. There's miracles and even a donkey. It's in there. It's in there. It's in there. We're getting there. Okay. Um, again, here's the problem, right? Like I said, God will speak in any way, shape, or form that God wants to, uh, the, whatever he decides to do. It's just going to be the way that he does it. And another problem is this, like, so um, <laughs> we think when, when we read the Old Testament and even some of the New Testament that, like, it's super common that God walks around talking to people all the time. Hey, saying, come over here, we're going to have a conversation, you know, and it feels like he's constantly doing that, but that's just not the case, right? The, the Old Testament spans, like, 4,000 years and a handful of times, maybe two handfuls of times, he actually speaks directly to people in that fashion. 
that's not a lot, right? Like, and you think about it. So the Bible is kind of, for the most part, written somewhat past tense, right? It's a record of things that happened, except for prophecies where it's like, you know, this is what's going to happen if you don't listen. Um, for the most part, it's fairly past tense. Um, so why, why do you think, like, why do you think the writers of what would ha- has happened um, decided to include some of this weird talking? Like God talking to people through bushes and donkeys and stuff like that. Why, why would that be something that's fancy? It's not because it's like, you know, look how crazy and amazing God is or how stoned somebody is because they're hearing somebody talk to them through a donkey, right? It's, it's this other thing. But the, the writers and compilers of the Bible made the decision to put this stuff in there for a reason. They didn't have to include that Moses was hearing God from the burning bush, right? It's, it's not a required part of the story to see how amazing God is later on, right? It's, it's weird, and it's this very brief interaction that happens in the greater scheme of the whole thing. So why add it in the first place, right? So, for, for instance, okay, so the, the, the books of Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and most of Deuteronomy were, are, are uh, written by, or should have, or sorry, um, uh, were said to have been written by Moses. Um, now, in general, today there's a lot of contemporary scholars who think that these books were actually compiled and put together uh, much later on by, uh, by different people um, during the exile in the Babylon, which was about 500 years before Jesus, right? So, like, why, why include that burning bush thing, right? Why, why include um, the passage in Numbers 22, 21 through 39? I'm not going to read it. Look it up. Um, it's where, where Balaam is being spoken to by God, um, or from God, uh, through a donkey. Why include this weird donkey, donkey point? Like, could you not get the point across in a different way? It's not, it's not like, it's not like, Balaam, like, it's not like Balaam was going around boasting about the fact that God spoke to him through a donkey, because people would think he was weird, right? My donkey? You're not going to believe this! No, we don't think we believe it. Off to the psych ward. It's crazy. Oh, oh, a burning bush. That's more believable, right? Like, they're not standing back going, look how amazing and perfect I am because God chose to speak to me. That's, that's not what's happening, right? But we have all of this weird, crazy stuff that happened after that. But it wasn't good. It's not like Moses was like, hey, everything's fantastic. Look at this. I'm going to go do amazing things. It was crap. He left and went to Egypt and there was plagues. And it was bad. And then they ran away from Pharaoh, who was chasing him. And then he had to go walk through an open ocean. Like, that's not freaking weird and scary. Right? And then, and then what happens? And then what? they go into the desert, <laughs> and they walk for 40 years. Super exciting. You know, the food was crap. <laughs> like, it's a manna. It's a, give me some steak. That wasn't good. Right? And then after 40 years of doing all that and all the craziness that happens throughout the book of Exodus, he doesn't even get to go into the promised land. He dies. Look, it's over there. Eh, dead. That's great. Sign me up. Right? And then, oh, uh, so what about the disciples? Right? Everything was perfect after Jesus spoke to them. They all died. Horrible deaths. Oh, not all of them. Sorry, not all of them. Uh, John lived. John lived. Um, he made it all the way to old age, and he died of old age. Um, and, well, like, his life actually goes down in, in, in le- legend, right? Like, it's a fantastic life. Um, one of the legends says that he was thrown into a boiling pot of oil and came out unscathed, so that's good. Um, another legend uh, says that he was poisoned. That's exciting. Uh, the book of Revelations actually says that uh, he was exiled to the island of Patmos. That's super exciting. I'd like to go to an island. It was a slave colony for a mine where he worked and toiled all day under the hot sun. Well, no, I guess not in the hot sun because you're in a mine, right? Until he was old and broken and couldn't work anymore. And then they pff, kicked his butt out. 
and he sent them off to Turkey, and he died of old age after writing the book of Revelations. Super exciting. Where do I sign up? That's fun. Bad things happen. So, like, for me, I'm thinking, like, okay, so if God spoke audibly to me through a donkey or a burning bush or what, this microphone, whatever, right? I'm like, I'm out. See it. Have a nice day. Because that's what you would do, right? We're great for Jonah. You know the story of Jonah, right? So, 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 so God goes to this guy, Jonah, right? And he says, go to Nineveh. Jonah's like, yeah, Tarshish, off I go. And he runs away from God in the complete opposite direction, right? And, and what, hap- what happens to him? So he gets away for a little while, right? Um, and then he's on a boat. And a big storm comes in, and him and all of his shipmates almost die. Uh, but he's saved, don't worry, because they threw him overboard, into the ocean, and a fish came and swallowed him. Well, it was a fish. He's inside of a fish. At least he's not riding the fish. That would just be weird, right? So he's now, he's in this fish, and the fish throws up, throws him up, and he lands on the beach, right? Okay, well, that's, okay, that's not so bad. So then he goes into Nineveh, and he's supposed to preach the, words, uh, uh, the, the Lord's word, right? Um, Nineveh is so big that it takes three days to walk across it. That's what the Bible says. So, so he's walking around Nineveh, proclaiming the word of the Lord, telling them that they need to turn away from their evil ways or, you know, they're going to be destroyed. And what does Nineveh do? Nineveh is like, uh, um, sure, yeah, okay, let's do that. And they change their ways. Now, Jonah's like, all of this stuff happens, and now they change their ways? Well, this sucks. Smite them anyways. And he's mad. And he leaves. And he runs out to the east of the city into the desert to go hide in the cabin that he made. Right? And you know what happens? <laughs> he goes and he sits outside because there's this beautiful bush that God put for him. And he sits in the shade and it's wonderful. And then the bush dies. And then he's in the desert and it's hot. And he's like, this sucks. And that's it. That's the end of the story. There's no like, and then everything was wonderful and there were unicorns and rainbows and fairies and stuff. It's just it. That's it. It just ends right there right? Bad things happen, (laughs) right? (laughs) Jonah ran and bad things happen. It's not a happy ending. Again, have a nice day. Go home. I'm only kidding. Um, This is, it's actually, this is one of the reasons why at Vox we have chosen not to speak in like dogmatic terms, right? Um, like we, don't, we don't do this, I have a word from the Lord, and the Lord told me this thing. We don't do that here, right? We, we, we have chosen not to because it feels more like, it feels more like this, this way of justifying something that I want to do for myself, right? And, and I've heard it often, like, God didn't speak to people that way. God doesn't come to us and say, you know what? Well, in my own defense, God did not come to me and tell me to eat the entire large pizza on my own the other day, and he sure as heck wasn't there at 2 o'clock in the morning when I was suffering through it. That wasn't him. (laughs) Go eat the pizza. No, don't eat the pizza. He's the one that's telling me not to eat the pizza. I'm the one that said, yeah, I got a free deal on some pizza. That's a message from the Lord. Should eat that old pizza. Why would I let it go to waste? It's like manna from heaven. No, it's a bad idea. So, like, the, the, the Lord, fortunately, will choose to speak to whoever he wants to, whenever he wants to do it, and it's always to benefit, like, the kingdom, Right? To, to make things back to the way that they're supposed to be. And, and he, he did choose. He chose people who were strong believers, right? But he also chose people who were big mess-ups like me, okay? Um, and whenever God spoke to these people, like I said, it, it doesn't feel like a great badge to wear, right? It's not a badge of honor that, that um, is being used, right? Right? Um, Fortunately, though, with all of that like weird negativity that I just kind of glanced over just a little bit, right? It's not that bad. We're fortunate because we, we have some good news in Jesus. See what I did there? Good news in Jesus. I thought that up. 
Uh, John 14, 25, it says, All this I have spoken while still with you. But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you all the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. Jesus leaves us with the Holy Spirit to help do the things that he asked us to do, to help us make things better and make our world look more like the kingdom of God. Not because it's going to be easy. Um, if you've been around Vox for a while, you know some of the story. I know Aaron and Kevin have been here, and so has Trevor and Heather. have been here for a long time, and Patrick and Michelle during the beginning of United House and Redwood Park Communities. None of that was easy. I know that Kevin and some of the kids were there ripping floorboards up trying to fix how easy it wasn't, right? It was hard, and it's been hard. Aaron has been very much involved in the happenings of Redwood Park Communities for years. Every day wasn't easy, was it? It's been rough. But there's little victories in that, little things that, that show that the kingdom is getting a little bit better, that things are just a little bit better, and we're moving in the right direction. Change is happening, and it's not just because people like Kevin and Aaron and Nathan and Carrie and Heather and Trevor and Tim and Rhonda and all the other people, including Elijah, who's in the front row here, it's not just because they did it. It's because God had them do it, and they decided to go ahead and do it no matter what no matter how difficult it was. And how much it sucked. Uh, how much 2 o'clock in the morning felt really bad, not because you ate pizza, but because you were doing the hard work. <laughs> so, I have some takeaways. Um, some takeaways to know if the Holy Spirit is actually speaking to you and leading you in a specific direction, okay? Um, first of all, number one, 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 number one, does this, what you're hearing, what you feel like you're being pushed towards, does it sound like Jesus? So, in context, um, I don't think that Jesus is telling me to eat the whole large pizza, Right? That doesn't sound like Jesus. I, couldn't, I looked it up just for the sake of it. I could not find that in the red letters in the Gospels. It's not there. Uh, if somebody else can find it, please send it to me so I have an excuse for future bad decisions. I would appreciate that. Um, but does it look like Jesus? Uh, next one. Is this life-giving? Does it sound like Jesus? Does it look like Jesus? Is this life-giving? Um, so making somebody's life better, not just your own, right? Does it look more like, like the kingdom? Is, it, is this something that is making things look more like the way that Jesus told us to look, made it look like, right? Um, another one, we're talking about the Holy Spirit, so fruits of the Spirit. Does this look like the fruits of the Spirit? Is this part of the fruits of the Spirit? Love, joy, patience, kindness, peace, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, self-control. Don't eat the large pizza, does it look like those? And uh, my favorite suggestion, and it's one that I come down to quite often, and to be honest with you, it's one of the reasons why I have some very close friends that I can go to when I need to. Um, do you have somebody in your life that will call you on your shit? So if you feel like the Lord is telling you to go and do something, if I bring that to Kevin or Patrick or Rob or Elijah or a number of people within our church, right, Heather, my wife, Trevor, um, everyone, <laughs> and they look at me and they say, that's a bad idea. The Lord didn't tell you to do that. Do you have people in your life that will do that for you? Because I know I have, I have some people in my life that are totally on the other shoulder going, eat the large pizza. You'll enjoy it. It's good for you. Now, now, in, in Rob's defense, he would, he would totally be like, eat the large pizza, but then come and sit with me while I'm suffering. Oh, maybe that might be weird. Anyways, um, he, would, he would totally be like, yeah, you could do that, and I'll be with you because you screwed up. <laughs> Don't worry, it's okay. 
right? But I definitely have people in my life that, that I know will call me on it when I, when I need them to, right? Um, do you have people like that? Is there, is there anybody here that has something specific that they do to kind of sort some of that out? Like how, how do you know that it sounds like the Lord? How do you know that you're listening to him? Is there anything on my list, on, or, or I should say on your list, that's not on my list? Okay, Heather said she starts walking, and she sees that Jesus comes with her. After she does all the other things. After she does all the other things. <laughs> so that's a good one, too. So if you think it's the Lord, right, and everybody supports all of those other things, if you take a big step forward and Jesus is still heading that way, sorry, I was one step behind the COVID line. If you take a big step forward and Jesus is heading that way, you might want to turn around and start heading that way. Right? Um, those are just some of my personal suggestions. That being said, I think I'm going to, yeah. Sir? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Michelle said the fruits of the Spirit. Do, does it look like the fruits of the Spirit? And I, yeah, 100%. 100%. You said something else, but I couldn't hear you. Okay, okay. Um, all right, so I'm going to get the worship team to come up. And I just want to say really quick that you guys sound great this morning. Um, that was wonderful. I was in the back listening to the first song, coming back after announcements, and like, oh, there, there might have been a tear or two. Thank you.